Welcome back to Switch to Linux. And today we're continuing our discussion on desktop environments and we have come to Cinnamon. So I wanted to do Cinnamon next because we looked at Mate, which was a fork of GNOME 2 and Cinnamon is a fork of GNOME 3. Both of these desktops came about because people overwhelmingly did not like the shift into the GNOME shell when GNOME 3 happened in 2011. So they have similarities in that the Mate and the Cinnamon desktop have a lot of similar appearances and similar functionality. It's just that Mate was forked before the switch to GNOME 3 and Cinnamon was forked after the switch to GNOME 3. The critical thing that causes this to be a significant thing is that Cinnamon, because of when it was forked, is always a more modern desktop than Mate. Mate still utilizes a lot of those older features that you might find back in the, the 90s, early 2000s, where there's not a lot of the modern things like online accounts and other things like that. But Cinnamon does contain all those. And for me, I fell in love with Cinnamon as an early Linux user. I realized Windows was no longer an option. I really hate the UI of Mac. And I was enjoying my time on Ubuntu. And the only thing I'm looking at it going, man, I got this Ubuntu here and the only thing I don't like about it is, is I can't navigate and jump between my different screens early, you know, easy enough. And so I experimented with putting the panels on the bottom of Ubuntu with Unity and that really didn't work well. And so I'm like, I'm looking around, let's see if there's anything else. And in my research, I found Linux Mint. And I installed Linux Mint on the computer. I put it in as a live ISO, download the ISO, put it on there put this on the ISO, I look at it and I go, wow, I just found the desktop. And so I just recently bought a computer which was going to be my mobile computer for traveling with. And that was my, my computer. I bought it and the very first desktop I put it on it was Ubuntu. I ran it with Ubuntu pretty well for about a week or two. And then I found Linux Mint. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And so I wiped it put Linux Mint on it, and I have not turned away from recommending Linux Mint to new users ever since. Because it has all of the things that we want inside of a desktop. It is familiar, it is modern, it is easy to use, it is intuitive. All of these things that are critically important in a desktop environment for a person who uses their computer as a tool and not using their computer as a hobbyist device. So what happened is GNOME goes from GNOME 2 to GNOME 3, changed the entire core, caused a big ruckus, two forks occurred, Mate based on GNOME 2, Cinnamon based on GNOME 3. Now when this first happened, the Linux Mint team wasn't quite sure what they were doing. They were using GNOME 2 at the time, and uh, they did know that they wanted to keep the traditional interface because Cinnamon was always for the new user coming from Windows, keeping the familiar environment. So with GNOME Shell having the ability to use extensions, they first released their build based on GNOME 3 with a pile of extensions to bring back the similar functionality. But if you've ever worked with GNOME a lot and you've used a lot of extensions, you know that it's not always the very elegant solution. So for a brief period of time, Linux Mint shipped with the option of GNOME 3 with extensions or or with uh, GNOME 2 and the newly evolving Mate desktop. And so with all this, that first attempt to make GNOME 3 work with extensions was not a particularly good experience. So what they end up doing is basing it on this GNOME 3, which initially required GNOME to be installed alongside in order to work, much like I believe Budgie does that to this day. Don't quote me on that, but I think that does to this day or if you want to use Budgie, you get GNOME installed with it because it is a dependency. Well, as of 2013, with Cinnamon version 2, GNOME was no longer a dependency. They were able to peel out all the things they wanted in GNOME 3, add in all those features of GNOME 2, 
put everything together, and now Gnome was no longer required. And this is really the thing that set Cinnamon going off all on its own way, despite still using the GTK, but Cinnamon also has a Qt editor that makes it very easy to use both types of applications, Qt and, and GTK, very easily. Now, Cinnamon is the closest to the Windows desktop environment, including several basic built-in utilities, all based on the various tools inside of GNOME. That is very significant because even as Windows has been slowly and subtly shifting, Cinnamon seems to go with it. Now they have not adopted the start menu, and I'm so happy because I liked that old traditional start menu that we get, but there is an advanced menu inside of Cinnamon that you can get some functionality like the current Windows Start menu. It's not quite as good as Plasma has a new menu that duplicates the Windows Start menu. It's not as good as that one, but it does its task if you like that menu. I hate that Windows 10 Start menu. I think it's abominable mess. I can't hide things. Everything is all thrown into one location. There's really no categories. It's all a giant, huge alphabetized list. So I really love what Linux Mint uh, has done with the Cinnamon desktop. And that's something I didn't mention. Cinnamon is known by and created by the Linux Mint team. So Linux Mint has contributed back to the Linux community with one of the best, most modern, and most familiar desktops we have going through it. And with this, we have a familiar interface for anybody moving from Windows environment, keeping that familiar desktop. And again, this is for people who use their computers as a tool to get their work done, not for people who are computer hobbyists and want to push the limits of what their system can do. And so because of this, Cinnamon is just such a good desktop with all the built-in utilities, Nemo functions, and they've pulled out all the things I hate about Nautilus, and we have the X player, the X reader, all of these are great tools based on the GNOME, uh, the GNOME tools, but keeping that old modern type of interface that most people still enjoy to this day. Now that Cinnamon is its own thing and it's just such a moving force, it has been basically ported to nearly every Linux distro. I'm running Cinnamon on my Arch system right now in addition, just because I put GNOME on there to give it a try, eh, put Deepin on there, eh. I'm back to Cinnamon. I might like to stick with Plasma if I stick with Arch on that system for a while longer. I might add Plasma to it as well. But still, Cinnamon is just this perfect default for the way I work. Everything works, it gets out of your way, it's easy to customize, you don't get overwhelmed in settings, but there actually are enough settings to do. So with all of these issues, I looked at pros and cons, and this is hilarious because I looked at several sites for pros and cons, and I can find very few cons with it. And I myself, I still, I still pulled out three, and I only really agree with mm, maybe one of them. So first let's look at our pros though. Linux, Mint, Cinnamon, or just the Cinnamon desktop, I should say. What are the biggest pros? The huge pro is it's familiar. This is why when I first threw Linux Mint on a computer, when I first saw it, I'm like, this is exactly what I had been looking for, bar none, no compromise. It's familiar. Because it's so familiar, it is intuitive. So it gives you exactly what you need, exactly what you're looking for. It provides a good balance of your settings without overwhelming you and allows you to easily install themes very much like Plasma. You click the button to go online, get more, and it auto installs them for you so you do not have to download the zip folders, know where to put them, and then add your themes from there. Now, as far as the cons, really the only major legitimate con, it is heavier in resources. It's not super heavy, but if you do not have at least four gigs on your computer, you probably want to give Cinnamon a pass, go with Mate or XFCE if you're looking for the similar environment. But as long as your computer has four gigs or more of RAM, Cinnamon is going to run well for you. Now it does adapt its RAM usage to be a percentage of the RAM in your system. So if you boot it into a big old system with like 16 gigs of RAM, you're like, man, this thing runs, uses a lot of RAM. Well, if you boot the same thing into something with two gigs of RAM, it will actually still work fine. It will be a little bit slower to respond. But the RAM usage that it has is a little bit of a percentage, up to a certain cap. It'll, you know, eventually it'll stop. But um, 
The second thing a lot of people said is it could be buggy. I have noted a few of these, particularly with the change in the desktop icons. I think that was at the Cinnamon 3 point something version, I forget. I did find that some of the desktop icons were a little bit buggy when they added more ability to sort and control the desktop locations and auto sorting of desktop icons. I did notice a little of that. Every now and again, you do find Cinnamon will crash, but it is actually still pretty rare. On my Arch system, I have never had a Cinnamon crash. On my main uh, main production computer, eh, once in a while, but after two years running it, I've actually had more problems on my Windows 7 computer, blue screening of death, than I've had Cinnamon problems on my, my main production Linux Mint machine. So take that for what it's worth. The other, the other one that is kind of legitimate, but kind of not, is there really is no documentation for it. The reason that's really is a problem, there's no documentation. The reason it's not a problem, for what? It's so stinking intuitive. You don't get lost in the settings. It's You understand it out of the box if you have any experience with the computers and you can pick it up faster than most other desktop environments. So there's my brief tour through Cinnamon. Let me know your thoughts on this desktop. It is absolutely my favorite desktop. I tried to be objective with it all the same, you know, and I think that that did come off. But at the same time, this is a great desktop environment. If you are a Windows user coming to Linux, use something that has Cinnamon. It's going to give you the best and smoothest transition. Let me know your thoughts on all these in the comments down below.